We've looked at scalar multiplication graphically. What about vector addition? Let's make a preliminary observation about the addition of regular real numbers. Say we have the statement two plus three equals five. Well, this two, this three, and this five can all be visually represented on number lines. Ordinarily, you'd represent numbers as points, but you could also think of numbers as line segments. Two is the length of this line segment. Three is the length of this line segment. Two plus three is five, and that's visually, if you take this line segment, and now you take this line segment and you move it down here, you get the line segment representing five. Vector addition is just like that. Say that we have the vector one, three, plus the vector two, negative one. We can do the addition. But let's now look at this graphically. Here's the vector one, three. Here's the vector for heaven's sake, here's the vector two negative one. And if you take this line segment and move it over here, well, you wind up here. And similarly, if you take this line segment, and move it up here, you again wind up at this point. And where's the vector three, two? Well, it's right there. So just like numerical addition, where you can think of taking this line segment and adding it to this line segment to get this line segment. So a vector addition. And the phrase that normally gets used is that we move our vectors so that they're tip to tail. And this visual thing has a name. It's called the parallelogram law, because notice the figure we created here is a parallelogram. Now, you wouldn't use the parallelogram law to do this addition any more than you add two and three by looking at line segments. You'd do the addition the way we did up here. Add the first elements, add the second elements. But this does provide some useful intuition about what the addition is actually doing geometrically. Yeah.